Thank you, Lord. Welcome everyone to Life Together Fellowship. Isn't it wonderful when his presence is here and he ministers to us and he knows all your business? Look at your neighbor and say, God knows all your business. Look at them again and say, check this out. I'm serious. God knows all your business. Don't you hate it when people know your business, right? Well, God is all up in your business. And not for anything more, but because he loves you, church. So when he's up all in your business, say, Lord, you can be all up in my business all you want. Because I know you love me. I know you're faithful. I know you're going to see me through. That's such a good feeling when, when you know, when, whenever you hear a word, whenever you read the scriptures or whenever you're sitting down and, and the word just speaks to your heart. I love it when, when I, people walk outside and they say, Pastor, you were all up in my business. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're going through, but God knows what you're going through. So when God speaks, there's like a peace that surpasses all understanding. That's God reassuring you and saying, listen, child, I love you. I created you. I'm with you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I will see you through. Although it looks impossible. Because how many of us face circumstances that look impossible? I love you too much. I created you with a plan and a purpose. And I will see you through. So can we just thank the Lord quickly and come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I was blessed um, yesterday to go to um, Robert Moses Beach for five minutes. And as I was driving, I was in the car alone, and I drove there, and I'm saying, Lord, I had some worship music blasting. I was like, Siri, call Pastor Josue. <laughs> and I said, Pastor Josue, can we do promises? And he said, first he said, okay, because he always says, okay, thank you. <laughs> but I guess then it kicked in and he says, it's on the set list for tomorrow. So not only was God speaking to him as he puts the set list together, but God was speaking to me. Folks, there are some that are struggling, and we got to keep it real. God understands struggle. God's not asking you to come to church, pick up your chest, and, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored, and everything's going fine. And then you walk out these doors, and you're crumbling. God understands that. It's okay to say to each other, I'm pressing through. I'm taking it one day at a time. I'm holding on to his promises. God is faithful. You see, we have, to, we have to know those things from the word of God so that we can speak them to ourselves and speak them to others. God is faithful. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Because there's one in the world that's full time. I read this week, uh, the devil is a, a, a full, the, the devil's, he's a full time devil. Stop being a part-time Christian, or you can't defeat the enemy being a part-time Christian, I think it was what it said. Folks, we're not Christians when we come to church on Sundays. We're Christians all the time, 24 hours, seven days a week. That means that when you're in your car alone and the enemy is trying to beat you down, say, I'm a child of God. I'm blessed and highly favored. God is a keeper of his promises, and he's going to see me through. Not because I say so, but because I've read it in his word, and I'm holding on to that. But if we don't, he'll have a heyday with us, church. And I don't know, we're the head, not the tail. And we need to act like we're the head, not the tail. Amen, church? So we're going to continue our series. I want to welcome some people back from vacation. <laughs> Suffering for Jesus. And 
different parts of the world looking for colleges for their kids and getting on helicopters and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't even take their pastors with them. Hallelujah. I'm just kidding, guys. We were all invited. <laughs> uh, okay. Deuteronomy. We're still on obedience over sacrifice. Today is Deuteronomy chapter 7. I mean, chapter 5, verse 17. I'm not going to make... Wow, thank you. Let's stand for the word. I was actually going to make you stand for the next scripture, so we can read them both. You shall not murder. That was quick. Simple. To the point. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. We believe that there is power in your word. Resurrection power, my God. We were once dead and today we're alive, my God. Because your word spoke to us, my Father God. And remove the scales from our eyes, my God. Remove the earplugs in our ears, my God. And brought forth revelation, my Father God. The word sets us free, my God. And we're asking, oh God, that you would... Seal your word in our hearts, in our minds, and help us to become the people of God you called us to become and that you already see us to be, my God, because you're an all-knowing God. We love you. We thank you and pray all these things in Jesus' name. And the people of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. you may be seated. So it says, do not murder. And some of you are probably... Checking off your checklist. I haven't murdered nobody. I'm good. That's, that's one of the commandments I know I'm good with. No blood in my hands. How many know you can kill someone without shedding their blood? So before we get into thou shalt not murder, I guess if we're going to talk about murder, we should talk about the first murder that ever happened, right? Anybody know that murder? Cain and Abel, Genesis 4. If you could turn with me to Genesis 4. Folks, I'm going to be a little on a lot of scriptures, so just take a pen, write them down. Or go to the YouTube channel and, and see it again during the week. But Genesis chapter 4. Now Adam... We're doing the New Living Translation today. I know I'm switching it up on you, but my wife is smiling there. Yes. She's like, yes. She loves the New Living. I love the New American Standard. But there are times when I read the New Living Translation, it's like, oh, this is so smooth to understand. And I always want you folks to understand the word better and better each day. Now, Adam had sexual relations with his wife. Eve, and she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, she said, with the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time, to, when it was time for harvest, the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best portion of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected. Why are you so angry, the Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at your door, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. One day, Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out into the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Afterwards, the Lord asked Cain, 
Where is your brother? Where is Abel? I don't know. Cain responded, am I my brother's guardian? I like brother's keepers better. But the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed and banished from the ground, which, were, which has swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield good crops for you, no matter how hard you work. From now on, you will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. Cain replied to the Lord, my punishment is too great for me to bear. You have banished me from the land and from your presence. You have made me a homeless wanderer. Anyone who finds me will kill me. The Lord replied, no, for I will give a sevenfold punishment to anyone who kills you. And then the Lord put a mark on Cain to warn anyone who might try to kill him. So Cain left the Lord's presence and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. First two brothers. I want to talk about what takes us to the place of murder. Why, why, why does a person get to that place that is so quick? To take another person's life. And here as we read the first murder in this world. We kind of understand that anger was one of the reasons. Any, anybody here get angry? <laughs> the rest of you, mira. <laughs> I'm going to ask one more time. Any of you get angry? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're human. And sometimes things that people do or things that, that just happen in life get you to that place. But we have to watch out when we get to that place. Because anger, if not controlled... You can do things that you shouldn't do. Hence, murder. Now, why was he angry is the question we should ask. And he was angry because God accepted whose offering? He did not only accept his offering. He accepted him. Because the offering he was giving the Lord was the best offering. I won't talk about tithes and offerings today, church. <laughs> Calm down. Are you giving God your best? And that could be anything, church. That's not just about money. It's God has blessed you. Every day that you wake up, you're a blessed man and woman. Well, pastor, you don't know where I wake up. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know my bills. No, the Bible says that every day you wake up, he gives you new mercy and new grace. New mercy and new grace. Folks, you don't need anything more. You just need that new mercy and that new grace. Because that new mercy and new grace will carry you through the day. Because we're, be, we're busy worrying about tomorrow. How many worry about tomorrow? And the Bible tells us that tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow's not promised, so we can get caught up in worrying and we waste that day. Every day, he gives us new mercy, new grace. So whatever you're going through, you have a new day that God can bring through forth a breakthrough in that situation. How many are waiting for breakthroughs? In relationships, in marriage, with your children, in your finances, at work, in everything. We're waiting for breakthroughs. Well, God can do that every single morning when you wake up. There's a new possibility. Now, if you don't wake up, <laughs> my sister said, adios. <laughs> I hope we see you in heaven. Amen. But every day that you wake up, church, 
Wake up with a smile. Wake up with a heart of thanksgiving. A heart of thanksgiving. I need air, please. <laughs> I try to signal. I can't, I can't signal no more. I'm going to lose my hair. I <laughs> it's a new possibility for the situation, the circumstances that you're facing to turn around. And if it doesn't happen that day, the next day when you wake up, another smile, another thank you, because it can happen on that day. Listen, some people have been praying for 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. How many have had answered prayer 10 years later, 5 years later, 20 years later? Gra grandmothers praying for their kids, mothers praying for their children. And folks, God's timing is perfect. The, the thing is, we want it now. So <clears throat> Cain was, was jealous, was angry because Abel's sacrifice was accepted and Abel was accepted. You see, what, what Abel did was whatever is best, I'm going to give it to God because I'm grateful. And if he would have had the same attitude... If we would have taken that position, his offering would have been accepted and Cain would have been accepted. And folks, the Bible says that he maketh a way of escape. And he did to Cain because he told him, be careful who's crouching at the door. Sin is crouching at the door. He's letting him know, check this out. It's ready to take over you. Sin shouldn't master you. You master sin. You need to take your place. Because if you don't take your place, sin will take you over. So he was warned. I think that Shows a lot of love from the Lord. Because the minute he saw that anger and, and that jealousy and that, and that position that he took, God would have said, okay, you're out. But he didn't. He gave him the opportunity. Check this out. Sin is at your door. He wants to take over. We know that sin, right? He, he wants to put a foothold in the door, right? And once he puts a foothold, how many know? He just wants a little bit. Folks, we can't give him a little bit. And we have to be careful with that. Because once you give him a little bit, he's taking over your living room. He's all in your bedroom. He's all in your business and family. Have you ever had a visitor that came in poquito a poquito? It's just for a day. Bro, it's been six months. And you got a closet in the living room and you've made yourself at home. Time to go. That's the enemy. Once he gets in, he don't want to go. He'll, he'll release some of his pores when he's destroyed your home, destroyed your marriage, destroyed your finances, destroyed everything you have. And he's made you lose hope in him. Because that's his job. Because once he knows that you have hope in him, that becomes dangerous for him. I put my hope. In Jesus, not in man, not in things, not in finances, but I put my hope in Jesus. I'm anchored to Jesus, folks. Because when you're anchored to him, everything is going to be all right. Look at your neighbor and say, everything is going to be all right. Now you got to finish that. When you put your hope in Jesus. All right, some of you are like, uh, you're supposed to look at each other. Ready? Everything's going to be all right. When you put your hope in Jesus. Isn't God good, church? So here goes Cain. He's telling him, sin is crossing at your door. You better do something. Master it because if not, sin is going to master you. And he didn't master it, church. So he committed murder. What's wrong about murder? 
He's creator. He has the right to give life, and he has the right to take life. Nobody else, church. Now, there are circumstances that allow us to take a life. And that is to defend yourself, your family. Right? The hope is that you don't have to take that life. But in self-defense, if it happens... If we go through the Bible, when those things happen, he would give them a place of refuge. Remember that? There's a town that they can go to and find refuge. Because there was an intentional murder. It was self-defense. Well, I had to defend my kids. I had to defend my wife. I had to defend my home. Same rights are given to the people that are soldiers, the people that are police officers, they have firearms, is to defend the freedom of this country, to defend, uh, you know, they're only allowed to use that firearm to save another person's life or defend their own. That's it. And for target practice. <laughs> um, so, there are some circumstances, according to the word of God, where... And people say, well, you know, God says do not murder, but he was the biggest murderer in. Remember what I said before? He gives life and he takes life. He's creator. Are you going to sit and have a conversation and put a table and say, Lord, so why did you do this? And we do that. We do that in our minds. In our minds, we tell God, you should have done it that way. You should have did this. Because in our little puny, little minds, we want to be God. And we want to tell the creator what to do. And God's like, no, that's not. So we have to be careful with those things, church. The first murder was Cain and Abel. Cain murdering Abel. The reason he let sin crouch at the door too long. Once we see sin... The word of God says he make it a way of escape. You choose to escape or you choose to stay there. And if you choose to stay there, more than likely you lose the battle. Unless he's telling you, stay in that storm because I'm with you. And there are times, like Joseph, when sin was crouching at the door, what did he do? Sometimes we just, just got to run. I used to tell my kids, better a live chicken than a dead duck. <laughs> they want something from you, give it to them. I'll buy it again. But a life you can't replace. Oh, I stood my ground. I didn't let go of my sneakers. But I got five stab wounds. Was your sneakers worth that much? They got another pair at the Foot Locker or wherever you go shop. Oh, well, you know, I'm not going to look brave. You want to look brave? Five stab wounds going to make you look brave? Being on a respirator is going to make you look brave? No. It ain't worth it, church. Yes, we do have to stand for things. But it ain't worth giving your life. We need to learn those things. Things can be bought again. You might work a little harder and you say that's not fair. How many at times know that life is not fair? But he's fair. He's always fair, church. There's never a time where God is unfair. He's always fair. You might not feel that way, but it ain't about your feelings. It's about the truth of the word. He gave Cain a way of escape. He should have took it. Just like we need to take the way of escape when he gives to us. And folks, we need to be careful because it all starts in the heart. In the heart. Let's go to Mark 7. Mark chapter 7. Oh, Jesus. 
Jesus. Six minutes. I got six minutes. I promised my team I'd do better. They're looking at me. Mark chapter 7, beginning at verse 6. You have it? Mark 7, 6. Okay. Jesus replied, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when, the, when he prophesied about you. For he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship is farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commandments from God. Whose commandments do we follow? For you ignore God's law and substitute your own traditions. When he said, you skillfully sidestep God's law in order to hold on to your own tradition. For instance, Moses gave you this law from God. Honor your father and your mother. And anyone who speaks disrespectfully of your father and mother must be put to death. But you say it is all right for people to say to their parents, sorry, I can't help you. For I have a vow to give to God what I would have given you. In this way, you let them disregard their needy parents. And you say, cancel the word of God in order to hand down your own traditions. And this is only one example among many others. It's getting there, church. Honor your parents was last week. Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. All of you listen, he said, and try to understand. It's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes out of your heart. When Jesus went into a house to get away from the crowd and his disciples asked him what he meant by the parable he had just used, don't you understand either, he asked. Can't you see that the food you put into your body cannot, be def def cannot defile you? Food doesn't go into your heart, but only passes through your stomach and then goes into the sewer. By saying this, he declared that every kind of food is acceptable in God's eyes. And then he added, somebody's hungry, they said, amen. Every. <laughs> Sancocho today. Pernir, arroz con gandule. Some macaroni and cheese. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then he added, it is what comes from the inside that defiles you. For from within, out of a person's heart, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defiles you. I didn't want to read the whole thing, but a little verse is more. The Pharisees were getting on top of his disciples because then... When they went to eat, they didn't wash their hands. And so they broke the law of the tradition of the Pharisees because it wasn't God's law. You guys are awesome. They listened. Yes. Thank you. I said, you got to help me, brother. You got to help me. Because listen, I've been sharing this pulpit. And one thing about a preacher, he loves to preach. And I could sit here for hours preaching. But then you guys are going to be like, oh, I got to go. <laughs> I got to go see my mama. I got to go eat. I got a whatever appointment. So I'm trying to discipline myself because I want to be mindful of you guys. So the Pharisees were upset because these disciples came and they didn't wash their hands. And he's like, they're worried about the outside, about washing your hands. And Jesus is like, yo, worry about the inside. Because sin comes from the inside. And it comes from what's in your heart. And if you don't strain out what's in the heart, church, murder can come about. 
because of jealousy, because of anger, because of so many things. And so how do we address the heart? How do we address the heart, church? The more you get this in here, the more it will come in here, and the more it will come down to here. There's a cleansing process. But if this word is not coming in here, and it's not going in here, and it's not touching this, folks, you're going to still fight with the sins that you've been fighting before you met Christ. The word of God sets us free, church. You want to experience free freedom? You want to walk in the freedom that God provides for you? Listen, there are times thoughts come to my mind and I'm like, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I'm a child of God. I'm not going to think about that. But if you don't know that, you entertain it. And then when you entertain it, you're like, hmm, this is not so bad. Nobody will see me. Nobody will know. No. Forget about worrying about anybody. Worry about who sees your heart. Who sees your heart? Because, folks, we've murdered people with our mouths. We've murdered people with our thoughts. And we got to be careful with that. He wants a pure heart. How do you get a pure heart? <laughs> this word just chops your heart up. <laughs> Santo. I'm going to honor my people. The commands he gives us are for a purpose, church. You might sit here and say, well, you know what? I've never murdered. Thank you for the sermon. It's not for me. Be careful. Be careful he's not crouching at your door. We've seen people murder because of jealousness. Right? They, they want what other people have. And God tells us, do not cover it. If he blessed them or if they have that, whatever way they got it, then, Lord, bless them with even more. Don't be jealous of what they have. We've seen people get murdered because they break into homes because they want what other people have. Or they take their cars or, or, or something else. No. We can't envy other people. If they've been blessed... Praise God. You've been blessed because he's your Lord and Savior. And he'll bless you with things when you, when you do good with the little. But we want the blessings when we don't even do good with the little. So don't let that come into your heart. And I would, I would recommend, Lord, search my heart. Lord, bring, bring whatever's in here that needs to come out, Lord. And then read your word because just praying, say, Lord, clean me. Lord, take it out. How does the Lord take things out? <laughs> read the word. And when that word penetrates your heart and the mirror comes and reveals things that, that you, listen, you've been coveting. You've been watching sister's wife. She ain't your wife. That's next week. She ain't your wife. She ain't your husband. Be happy with what you got. Take care of your own grass. Stop looking at the neighbor's grass. Because you don't know what goes on behind. What you think might be better might be worse. But you're busy with the eyes. What did I say before, Lord? Thank you for the wife that I have. Thank you for the husband that I have. Lord, he doesn't take out the garbage, but Lord, I would love him. Because when we get into an attitude of gratitude, church, 
this heart starts changing. So, you know I got to confess, right? That's who I am, and then I'll close out. So yesterday, my beautiful wife and my beautiful son and his beautiful girlfriend said, we're going to the beach. And my wife looks at me like, you going? I know you got to get ready for tomorrow. It's okay. You don't have to go. When I preach, Saturdays for me are like, my mind, everything just has to. And she says, you don't have to go. Don't have to. So they get in. They get in the car. They drive. So I'm, I'm, I just got to go get my iPad in the car. And I go get my iPad. And then I just went and did an errand. Came back. And I said, yes. I got into the house. I was like, yes, I can just focus on you, Lord. Thring. Thring. That's the old bell. I can't do this. And my wife Honey, I said, yeah. <laughs> Joe lost the key to the car. I said, oh. And we're at the beach. I said, oh. So we just got here, and we don't know how we're going to get home. And I love her because she said, can you send someone? <laughs> she thinks I, I'm Jesus and I got a legion of angels that I can say, go. <laughs> and at first, I got a little uptight, church. I said, Lord, I don't, you know, I want to sit in your word. I want to sit in your presence. Now I got to go drive an hour and 25 minutes because when you drive to the beach on Saturdays. I drive back. And as I was driving and I put up that worship music. I mean, I was just being ministered to church. Then the Lord said to me, would you rather drive to take them to the keys or whether you want to drive to recognize their body? Is it too much to ask of you to get uncomfortable? And then was a check in my body. In my heart and in my mind, I got out the car, saw my son, and said, hey, God bless you. He, he must have been like, are you all right, Dad? I looked at him and I said, it's just a key. Don't worry about it. Here's the key. That's why I started off today with saying I went to Jonah. To, to, to Robert Moses Beach for five minutes. <laughs> My wife calls me because she didn't come to the car. <laughs> she was like, he must be furious. <laughs> she said, My boy, vete, 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 busca la llave. <laughs> and, <she said, laughs> and she calls me and says, Hi, hon. <laughs> and she says, Joe's worried. And he said, don't worry about it. But then she tried it. She said, you don't want to sit here for an hour and, a, and sit with me in the beach for an hour and a half. And a half. Then we drive together by. I said, no. <laughs> I wasn't dressed for the beach. <laughs> and I said, no, hon, but don't worry about it. It's just a key. We can always buy a key. But you see how the mind thinks, church? And you see how if you don't put it in place, and God says, don't worry, I'll take care of you. I'll minister to you going, and I'll minister to you coming. So let's sing this song, and then I'll pray out, and then um, Brittany will bring some announcements.
sing them. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Lord, I need Let's open our hands Every in declaration, Lord, I, I need you. I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Father, I thank you for this day, O oh God. And Lord, I thank you for your commandments, O oh Father God. I thank you, O oh God, that you are God of order, my Father God. And you know what should be done and what should not be done, O oh Father God. And although you gave these commandments, O oh God, so much time after Abel killed his brother Cain, my Father God. You know the heart of man, my Father God. And you know what we're capable of doing when we let sin crouch at our door, oh Father God. Lord, I pray this morning, my God, that we would honor your word, my Father God. And that we would not come to that place that we would murder someone physically, oh God. Or we would murder them in our minds and in our hearts, oh Father God. Help us to remember your word that says to love thy neighbor as thyself, my God. Because when we look at someone else, my God, it didn't say love them if they're nice, my God. It says love them, oh God, as thyself, my God. And so, Lord, I ask you today, my God, there are people that have been hurt here, my God, many different ways, my God. And sometimes we hold on to anger, my God. Sometimes we're furious, my God, of things that, that people have done to us, my God. Lord, I pray for a cleansing today, my God. I pray for a cleansing, oh God, of their minds and of their hearts, my God. I pray, oh God, that when those evil thoughts come to mind, my God, when sin comes crouching, my God, that they would call upon the name of Jesus, hallelujah. That name that is above every name, that name that every knee shall bow and confess one day to, oh God. Jesus, I need your help. Jesus, remove these thoughts. Jesus, heal this pain, heal this anger, Lord. And he will, church, heal. I ask you, Lord, as we're going Oh, God, through these commandments, my God, whichever one you would bring to light, my God, seal and heal that area of our life, my God, so that we can honor you, my God, and obey you, my God, because obedience is better than sacrifice, my God. 
But we hold on to your word that says apart from you, we can't do nothing. So can we obey these commandments? Yes, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the revelation of this word, and Christ going before us. Bless everyone here today, my God. I pray and I ask all these things in Jesus' name. And the people of the Lord said...